Hello guys, welcome back. So I think today I'm actually going to wrap this series up. Um, I just don't know if there's enough to really dedicate each of those other videos. Um, so I think I'm just going to kind of wrap it up. Oh, bumped the camera there. So the, generally, the organization that I have is we kind of covered pliers, stuff like that. You'll see something a little new here. That was actually a recommendation from a, from a comment. Um, to pick that up pretty immediately. But I think what I'm going to do is today I'm going to actually focus on maybe on some of the odds and ends, some electrical monitoring and stuff. So uh, with this tape, I actually have just one of these night eyes kind of zip tie, or not zip ties, twist tie things. Just holds the tape, keeps it out of my way. Um, but on the side pocket, nice classic Swanson square. Um, I have the adjustable square, but for some reason, this one just feels better. I use this to gauge or to help me cut straight lines, to write straight lines, to get angles, um, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, I, uh, I prefer the, the solid speed square versus the adjustable square. Got a thermometer. So this is a, like a surface thermometer. Um, it's one of those laser, laser thermometers. Looks like my speed square is 73 degrees. Um, I use this mostly just to, um, I actually bought this during the pandemic, but mostly for, um, like if I'm going to be working on water heater or a pipe, if I don't want to touch something first, I usually just give it a quick scan. I also have used this to determine heat loss on some stuff. So I was outside and I was taking temperature uh, around a vent that I have in the attic just to kind of get an idea of heat loss and or the insulation uh, value of something. Um, I don't use this all the time, but it's really nice to have an infrared thermometer like this. Um, just to kind of get surface temperature. It doesn't work great on liquids. So I have tried to use this for gauging like water temperature. Um, I think what it ends up doing is it just reads the temperature of the actual container because water is clear. I believe this uses reflection to gauge that temperature. I don't know exactly how it works, um, but it tends to read about seven to 10 degrees lower than an actual thermometer would read. So I have a meat thermometer that I use for coffee because um, I like to, I'm coffee snob. So I like to gauge the temperature of my coffee. I brew my coffee at 190 degrees. I drink my coffee at about 140 degrees. Um, so I used to use this until I realized it was about 10 degrees off. I just use that other thermometer now, uh, but it's nice to have. This is a moisture meter. So um, typically with firewood and stuff, you want low moisture. So I will use this to gauge uh, moisture in firewood to see if it's seasoned or not. Not something, again, not something, it's kind of specialty. You won't use it all the time, but really when you want it. I also have used this to determine whether or not there was moisture building up on studs and walls or drywall. Um, it'll give you a pretty good reading on drywall and studs to see if you've got moisture buildup somewhere. So it's not just used for, for the firewood stuff, but it's nice to be able to gauge moisture. Um, I've also used that in conjunction with this to determine if it was getting moisture as well. Um, so this is the GC, GFCI meter. I think everybody who you know, does any homework knows what this is. It just determines whether or not the, the GFCI is properly wired. Um, I've used this typically when I'm replacing outlets. Uh, but I have actually noticed that some of the outlets in my house when I bought it were wired wrong, and this helped me fix that. So it's it just tells you, you can plug it in, it just tells you if the, the outlet's good or not, but it also has the GFCI tester part. Um, and it'll actually tell you whether it's open, uh, neutral, ground, all that stuff, so you can see. So you want the two yellows, obviously here, you want the two yellows if the red is um, lit up, that means you've got some error and then you can use the dots here to gauge what that error might be. So it's nice to have lightweight. So this is actually, um, a non-contact voltage detector. So you can actually touch this end onto a wire, uh, even through insulation and it'll tell you if it has power. So this is more of a safety feature. Uh, when I'm doing any electrical work, I may turn off a, the fuse, um, or the breaker of the 
breaker that I think I'm working on. Uh, but sometimes there are random wires that don't aren't falling on that breaker. Uh, for instance, I actually have a closet light in the room I'm standing in that was wired to a breaker for another part of the house. Um, but I turned the breaker off in the main room, but the closet wiring did not turn off. So I still had power. And had I not tested that with this first, I could have I could have gotten a little bit of zap. Uh, would it have killed me? Probably not. I've zapped myself more than enough times to know that I probably will stand it. But it's not fun. So having something like this, you could literally just get close to it and it will start to beep and tell you whether or not it has power. No beeps, that means there's no power. Um, very, very useful, not expensive. Uh, this one has a built-in flashlight, but I've definitely got better flashlights. And of course, I just got some instructional stuff in here. Um, this is a very similar thing. Um, just tells you whether or not something has power. If the light comes on um, with these two probes, um, hot, neutral, uh, it just tells you if there's current power. Uh, I This was my first one uh, when I was testing outlets, but it didn't give me the results I really liked. Uh, I will typically use this for batteries and stuff now more than anything because I have a dedicated outlet one. Um, so this one I just keep just in case, but I don't use it as much anymore because I have proper uh, electrical meters and stuff now. Um, so, and then kind of spinning this even more onto measuring. So measuring, I've got a Stanley Fat Max. This is the auto lock one. Uh, I will say that I am not actually a huge fan of that auto lock because the longer it goes, it actually will slide in on its own. Um, I like Stanley Fat Max. They're good quality. They hold up pretty well. Uh, but this kind of auto lock system, if it's red, it's got the auto lock. Otherwise, it's normal. But if you do it this way uh, with the kind of self, you know, let it come back. There's no lock. So the only way that you can actually lock it is if you auto lock it. Otherwise you can't, you can't lock it. And because with the weight of this, the longer it gets, the more it's gonna kind of slowly come back in on itself. And that's pretty annoying. Um, I, would just, I would just get the normal Stanley Fat Max. Don't get the auto lock. 25 footer is good for me. Uh, I have something for longer distances, so I could probably even get away with a 20 footer, but I already have this. Uh, for long distance measuring or longer distance measuring, I actually have a, a digital reader. This thing is awesome uh, and it's very accurate. So I actually ordered this just on uh, online. So I actually have my initials here. My wife and I have the same one. She's an interior designer, so she is constantly measuring large rooms um, versus having to use a measuring tape. She can just use this and it allows her to get square footage, cubic feet, all of that stuff uh, very easily. So this is just a laser and then click it hmm. maybe it doesn't want to measure my hand distance That looks like it doesn't want to measure my hand distance. Anyway, um, it's been great. It works really well. It's better. It's good for you know large rooms when you're trying to measure a whole room versus trying to put the measuring tape end to end and start adding stuff up. Uh, that's just a charger for it. Here, I've just got more. This is just the instruction manual for it as well, in case you're wondering which one it is. I ordered this on Amazon. It's not expensive. Um, you can get better quality ones, but this one has worked pretty well for me. Moving on to more of miscellaneous stuff here. Pens, pencils, markers. Um, I have a, just a pack of these carpentry pencils. I like them because they don't roll. Uh, when you set this down in your workstation, having a pencil that doesn't roll the hell off is very nice. I also have these uh, Sharpie Pro markers. They work wet, dry, um, oily. It's very nice. This one's red and this one's black. But these are really, really nice to have. And again, they're flat so they don't roll. I've got one of these Purdy paint um, utility knife scraper things. Uh, it's nice. I, I prefer a fixed one. I tend to, to bump this so the scraping of this is not great. 
but it's good for removing caulking and scraping off light duty stuff. Um, you can open paint cans with it and screwdriver. It's got a little hammer butt on it. It's, it's useful, uh, but if you're gonna do anything you know, more heavy duty, I would definitely get the fixed version of this. It has all very similar tools, uh, but doesn't fold. Folding, I don't know. I just thought it was gonna be more compact, and it is, but when you put start scraping, you put a lot of pressure on that thing. It's, it's not confidence aspiring, but it's still good. Uh, I like the brand. The brand quality and everything is really nice. Um, it's just a matter of folding or not folding. I have a very small screwdriver, um, just kind of standard mechanic screwdriver. Uh, this used for everything. Um, when you don't have fingernails, this is your fingernail essentially. Uh, you can do valve stems and pull trim off and small flathead screw screws and electronics and all kinds of stuff. I mean, you can't really go wrong. It used to be a magnet back here, but that is gone. Speaking of, uh, this is a little level. I do have another level in here. This one's magnetic. It's nice. It has a magnetic tip, uh, but I can fit this one in my pocket and it gives me pretty accurate readings. Uh, so I like to have a couple of things in my pockets when I'm doing around the house. Some days I just dedicate to doing stuff around the house. It's nice to have these tools ready to go. That's why a lot of these stuff uh, is kind of more compact versions of one another. Uh, it's because I like to keep them in my, my shirt pockets when I'm dedicating time and days to stuff. Um, this one is just a telescoping magnet. Uh, I usually use this for more like tinkering mechanical stuff in like cars, like automotive stuff. If you ever dropped a bolt in an engine bay, you know uh, how handy and like much of a lifesaver this is. But I've dropped screws and stuff inside my drywall um, or, you know, inside light sockets or us uh, like wall sockets and stuff. And trying to get your little fingers down there is impossible. So if it's metal and you can get it with this, it's a lifesaver. Uh, definitely a headache saver at the very least. Just another one of those kind of twisty night eyes things. Um, useful to be able to hold stuff. Uh, I actually used this a lot when I was replacing lights for uh, my ceiling. So instead of, like as you're wiring it, it's really nice to be able to wrap the light fixture off of this so it's not, all the pressure is not on the actual wires themselves and you can properly hang this uh, without putting stress on those wires. So you can wire it without, you know, without having to hold it. So you can wire it with two hands. Uh, a lot of people will use the ground wire, kind of attach that first and then use that to anchor it. I prefer not to do that, so I use this. It, it just comes in handy. I mean, anything you can think of, um, very handy to have. This is one of those spring uh, punches and hammers. I guess it's called a spring hammer as well. Um, I use this mostly for punching uh, into metal or wood, so you just put this on the surface and then use your spring and do that. But I, what I've found is this works really, really well for door hinges as well. Door hinges are one of the most annoying things to try and get out, get out like those pins, um, because you can't really get a hammer in there. And so this, it just punches it right out uh, and it's flexible, super light. So I really like to, to have this on hand uh, for random things. Uh, it could also be used as a glass breaker in an emergency. So something to keep in mind. Got wire brushes, got a stainless and a brass. Uh, brass is softer, so it's easier to use for more delicate surfaces uh, when you don't want to use stainless because that will scratch a lot more. As you can see, these are quite used. Um, I mean, there's a million uses for these guys, so I'm not gonna go into detail, but they're just, you know, two inexpensive wire brushes. Kind of covered the cutter already and the scraper. That's all I've got on that side. On this side, I've got that Mora kind of clipped to the side. Already covered that. Um, so this is actually one of my favorite um, stud finders. <laughs> Believe it or not, magnets are amazing stud finders. So this one has three different magnets in it. So you can line them up on a wall and you can see the actual stud line. I do have a electronic one, which I really like. It's in here. I'll get to that. But having the magnets is actually really, really useful um, because it will also help you mark uh, like screw protector plates because they put uh, plates in front of piping or electronic or electrical wiring and stuff to help prevent screwing them in. Um, so this will help 
help you gauge that because the surface of magnetism will be much higher and wider than a, than a screw or a nail head what it might be. It's really nice, it's got magnets here and then it's got these two separate ones here um, where you can use to line up a... The only downfall is it, if nails aren't right in the center, it could give you a little bit of a wonky reading. But it's nice to have the magnets anyway, just safety, uh, safety sake. So I actually prefer magnet as my primary stud finder over the electronic stuff. I don't really like the electronic stuff in most cases. Um, gloves, self-explanatory, not gonna go into detail. Uh, this is actually a caulking tool. It helps scrape up caulking, um, apply caulking, and kind of spread it around. This has the adjustable rubber head, so you can pop this off and adjust to any of these tips you want. This is really nice. Uh, I actually typically just put a glove, like a disposable rubber glove on, dip my finger in soapy water and run it, and that bead of caulk is awesome, uh, gorgeous, but sometimes in tricky places when you need a little bit more delicate, professional look, um, you can use this guy. Not expensive, definitely worth it. Uh, in conjunction with these three things, you can pretty much do any caulking removal and or recaulking of stuff. So that's nice to have. Allen keys. Um, these are pretty heavy duty <laughs> Allen keys. You got SAE millimeter and the, the star head. Um, I mean, these are indispensable. Everything, you know, from Ikea furniture to uh, automotive to a lot of... Uh, Electronics, they sometimes use Allen keys. These have the swivel heads on them. That little ball at the end allows you to get angles that you wouldn't normally get with a flat. Um, these have a hinge on them, so you can actually swing them out and gain access. I like these a lot. Again, not expensive, but I have used the hell out of these and they've worked really, really well. Um, this brand has been surprisingly good, Lexavon. Good, I've had good luck with them. The coating is good, they're heavy duty, they're large. I like these. Swinging around the other side, we've covered these cable cutters, all of that. So I'm gonna just toss those to the side. I do have a file, just a cheap little file, um, cross, cross cut file. It's always nice to have a file on hand. Got a little metal file on the edge as well. So it's good to have one of those. I would prefer to get a higher quality one, but this is what I have. All right. uh, I have Rikon um, drill. These are the basically the Milwaukee copies, the 12 volts, the VMAX. It's good. Got a couple of these spider holders on them. Um, it works really nice. I have an impact impact as well. It's not a, I mean, it's not a true impact, but it's good. I like it. Compact, small, fits in the, the kit really well. Safety glasses. Got to protect them eyeballs. Cat's paw. Um, this is an S-wing one. Japanese made. I like S-wing. Um, cat paws are awesome. This one's actually fairly new. I don't have a ton of use on this one. I broke my other one, but it was a much cheaper one that I've had for years. Cat paws are good for removing nails or those heavy staples. Very nice. Um, I actually use this as a general prying tool as well. It's, got, it's meant to like dig into wood so you can get underneath the head of a nail. That's why these are kind of pointed. It works really, really well for that. I used uh, the other one a lot when I was kind of taking apart uh, wooden pallets to make a headboard. So, cat paw. The red, the red Devil pry bar. Um, this is a scraper pry bar. I like the narrowness of this. Uh, a lot of the kind of more hex style are kind of fat, and so it can actually become a problem to use. Uh, I really like this Red Devil one because it's super flat. It's got a nice scraper on the end, and it's got a pry bar here. You do have a nail puller, but since I have the cat's paw alongside it, I barely use that. Uh, but this is my go-to, just I gotta get that thing removed. Uh, tile, taking wood apart, you know, this is a destruction tool that I really, really appreciate. So simple and not overthought. Very nice. I do have some uh, vice grips, classic robo grips. These, 
they they felt gimmicky at first, but man, these are old as hell, USA made, and they are just wonderful. I didn't cover these in the pliers. Um, I don't I don't think if I did, um, but they are here and they are wonderful. If you can find a pair of the, the USA made versions, I think these are the nine or 10 inch versions. I just can't say enough, these are awesome. A couple more electrical things. These are the uh, vice grip. These are uh, just cable strippers, the automatic cable strippers. You'd feed your cable in there and it would pull, it would take the insulation as well as cut. Um, good to have. You do have an actual wire cutter down here too. You have crimpers as well. But I usually just use it for the stripping. You can adjust it. The only thing I don't really like about this one is this is all plastic here. And this feels pretty flimsy. I'm not going to lie. It just, nah. Feels like it could have been better executed. Everything else feels good though. It's all metal. Um, Klein tools, wire cutter, stripper, crimper, all the things. USA made. Amazing. Keep it simple. I like to have both. But if I only had to have one, I would choose this. It's just better. More tools. More use. It's good. That's my new Raptor. Ooh, I might do a separate, um, separate video on Nipex or Knipex, however you want to say it. You'll notice that actually kind of looks like a wrench head when it's closed. Probably not on accident. Uh, metal magnetic level. Got this on Amazon. It's great. It has a 30, 45, 90, and of course, zero degree. All metal. I really like the metal ones. They just seem to last a lot longer. Magnetic is really nice. Um, you have both top and side gauges. Um, and with this one, you have a bottom looky Lou as well, in case you didn't want the magnetism to affect it. Very nice. I mean, this looks brand new. I've had this for a long time, used it on a lot of things. Uh, I actually use this a lot when I'm trying to level the Jeep when we go overlanding. So I'll put this on the bottom of the frame and try and get my Jeep as level as possible with some leveling blocks that I have. Lumination. Um, this is one of my favorite things. So this is an LED strip and it is bright as hell. That thing, I mean, in, in night you can see everything. It goes on your head. Obviously it's a headlamp, but it's kind of, it's flexible. It's protected with this clear coat. The battery is on the back, totally rechargeable. Um, I have nothing bad about that. Say about say about this. It's great, especially when you're trying to be hands free, and when you're especially with like electrical stuff, when you have to turn off the breakers. Um, I just you can't go wrong. You need lights and to have it on your head and be able to see everything. It's great. I just picked this up at Lowe's. Not expensive, but definitely worth it. I mean, look at all those lights. This thing is awesome. I actually used this camping as well because it's just that good. Uh, this is a hex-based screw or a drill kit. So most drills are round at the base, but I wanted one I could use a normal um, impact wrench or impact driver for, or even just a normal drill there. So I got this set. It comes in all different types of sizes, and then the micros in here. Uh, this isn't any specific brand. I just picked one that had good reviews on Amazon. Um, these are semi-disposable because you're going to wear them out. You're going to possibly break them. So I don't do, I don't, I don't put a ton of, of thought into brand on these. As long as they cut when I need them to, I can easily replace these. Uh, although the opposing side of that is DeWalt. I've got the bit set. Um, with bits, I will go higher end because these aren't as disposable as the drills. These could last you a lifetime if you take care of them and you don't over overuse them and strip them. I've actually got some use on this one. I think I over torqued it a little. Um, but these are impact rated, which is nice. Got all, all the bits. 
Also just picked that up at the local hardware store, but I have only one set of bits, so I went ahead and got something nice. Here's that level. Um, this is the level that will actually tell you where the stud is, how wide the stud is. If you're gonna get a, a electronic one, get one like this. Um, I don't remember what brand this one is, but whatever brand, get one like this. I think I bought this at Costco years ago, um, but this one is the best one that I have found that's electronic. Here I have just uh, some wire connectors. These are the uh, lever ones. I always keep these at hand. Uh, I don't like the wing nuts, but I do have some of those as well. Uh, I just like to keep them. So you've got the, the five, three, two, so you can easily connect wires, electrical wiring. You just shove them in there and use the levers, pinch them down. So you don't have to worry about twisting them. You don't have to worry about all that stuff. You just clip them in and these are reusable. So I like to have those because when I take something apart, I can use it. Um, this is a LED work light, but also power bank. So this is a 10,000 um, milliamp hour power bank, but also a work light. Also very, very, very bright. Um, and it's got this little handle on the back, so you can either lean it up, hang it, do whatever you got to. Looks like it's, oh, there it is. Man, that is just. And you've got a couple of different modes. It dims, dim, off. But this thing's awesome power bank and LED, like LED wall. It's really nice. I like to have this. I actually use this camping as well. Um, very compact work light. I use this a lot when I'm trying to find imperfections in drywall. Uh, so when you're doing drywall finishing, you can use a light to find shadows and sand them down. So it's a little bit more smooth. Uh, that's why I bought this, but I use it for a lot more than that. It's a light. Lights are always useful. You gotta see what you're doing. I'm running out of room here. Oh man, long form content, not good. Just got a plug. A lot of my stuff uses, um, it's rechargeable, so it uses the LED or uh, USB socket. So I just have one. Uh, I think this one is for the headlamp, USB-C headlamp. This is one of those laser levels, uh, Black & Decker. You can put it on a wall, you can shove it into drywall. Um, with this little pin, it pops out, you nail it into a drywall, into drywall, and then you can turn it on and it'll give you a laser level. It's nice. Um, kind of a specific use case, but works. I don't typically like Black & Decker, but this, this seems to work pretty well. So. Hammer. 22 ouncer. I like the 22 ounce hammers. Um, this one has a little kind of tweak. So I use this one trying to straighten out, um, like if you're making a wall and you can put your two by four in there and you can kind of twist it to get it straight. Cause sometimes you've got twists and stuff in two by fours, especially when you're doing framing, you don't always buy the, the nicest wood for frames. Um, so that's nice. Uh, this one has a lot of use on it, as you can see. Also S-Wing. I like the brand for pry bars and stuff. Um, although my other uh, pry bar that I had was S-Wing and it snapped on simple, like the teeth on the end of the pry bar, snapped uh, taking apart pallets. So, I mean, maybe it's just one bad one, but typically I like S-Wing stuff. I would say this is probably my number one used um, cutting tool. So I have two Japanese wood saws. And if you've never used a Japanese wood saw before, they are amazing. They're pull saws. So they, they, they cut on a pull action. Um, very smooth. You can get fine tooth or more aggressive teeth. But anytime I have small cutting to do, I don't even bother with electric cutting. Um, I usually hand saw for most things. Um, when I can, I can get away with it. Uh, and this I just keep in my kit because it's awesome. I uh, can't go wrong with Japanese wood saws. You can actually get Vaughn brand Japanese wood saws at Home Depot or Lowe's, I can't remember, um, or Menards even, that are really good and they have replaceable blades. 
I've already gone over some pliers, so I'm not, or uh, wrenches, so I'm not gonna do that. And then I've got one of those twisty flexi drill or, or uh, attachments, just so you can get 90 degree on a drill or something and you can use it. I can't always get a, a drill into a confined space, so it's nice to have something you can get a little flexi on. The last thing I have, which I'm gonna say don't waste your money on, is this universal bit for bolts and stuff. Um, don't bother. You're just gonna twist these tines up if you're doing anything uh, worth using it for. If basically, if you can get it off with this, you can get off with it nearly with your hand uh, because any more pressure than that's gonna twist these tines up and you're not even gonna get the bolt out. I have it in case of emergencies, but I basically assume that if I'm using this, I have to throw this out. I've used it a couple of times in testing, um, but honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I'm just assuming that it's going to break because I've already broken one. I just happen to have two. I bought a set of two of these, the CRV on Amazon, and I don't know if there's a good brand. I think this actually might be the Gator brand, but don't bother. Just get a proper socket set, wrench set. And then, of course, next to duct tape twist ties, uh, these are the extreme cold ones. I just like to keep a set of these. These are pretty heavy duty. I might actually get um, a little bit heavier duty ones because I use them a lot for wiring uh, when I'm, if I'm more doing, you know, trying to clean up wiring, whether it's in home on, on a autom um, automobile or motorcycle or I use these camping, I mean, twist ties. They're, they're freaking twist ties but or, uh, zip ties, but they're really, really nice. Uh, normal zip ties will break under cold weather. They just become brittle because they're plastic. These ones are a little bit better. I'm not saying that they're negative uh, 40 degrees Fahrenheit better um, because these have snapped in much warmer weather than that, but uh, they are better than, than the other cheap ones. So definitely don't waste. And then just an adapter. This is a Makita brand. Uh, these are impact rated which is nice. I've snapped these, the cheaper ones off, um, just the tip off. So you definitely want that. You definitely want impact rated if you're gonna be using this for anything mechanical, um, anything that requires a lot of torque. So, oh, one other thing I didn't talk about. I got a super long one. So both of these are the Nikita brand ones. Nikita's great, just expensive, but since I went through two or three of these, I decided to just to shell out the money for a good, a good set instead of just buying cheap ones. And that's it. Uh, I was gonna split this up into individual videos, but I decided long form content. Um, if you guys don't like this, these long style videos, let me know. I'll never do them again if you don't even wanna watch them, but I personally enjoy this type of stuff. I enjoy the long uh, videos. I like to see the full sets. Um, but if you guys don't, just send a comment down below. Let me know if you're like, hey, 30 minutes is too damn long. Let me know what time frame you like, and I can try and shorten these up. I've got a lot in the books um, coming down the line. So still got camping stuff and, I mean, knives and all kinds of stuff. So they can be long or they can be short. Let me know. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks, guys, for sticking around if you've made it to the end. Um, and I look forward to... See you next time. Have a good one. Bye.